What's up everybody, it's Matt from 9 Day Performance back again with another video. On today's video we're working on a 2015 Corvette C7 uh, with a 6.2 liter LT1 engine. We're putting a camshaft in this vehicle from Texas Speed and Performance and to do this we need to do either a limiter or a lockout on the phaser for the VVT. This one's going to be getting a zero degree limiter which is considered a lockout in the Chevy platforms. For those that work on Hemis and Chevys you'll notice there's a little difference in the terminology. Uh, Hemis either say it's a lockout or a limiter. Um, the Chevy guys tend to say that it's either a zero degree limiter which means it's a lockout or a four degree limiter which means it's a limiter. Um, it can get kind of confusing so make sure that you know the difference between those two. Uh, to do this you're going to need some very simple tools. You're going to need a T25, you're going to need a torque wrench. Uh, a bolt of some sort to fit through the center of your phaser gear. You're of course going to need your phaser gear. Um, and then with the kits you're going to either get a limiter or a lock. This is a, like I said, is a lock. Um, so it's considered a zero degree limiter. And you're going to get this little tool that is to help you install it. How this works, okay, first things first. What we're going to do is notate where all of our markings are. There is a line right here. We have it at the 12 o'clock position, which I will zoom in to show you. Right there at 12 o'clock, there's a line. We're going to keep that upright. Um, we're going to break these loose. They are a T25. Make sure you have a strong one pressed in whenever you do it so you don't strip them out. Um, a vise is helpful, not required, but uh, it does help you keep everything steady while you're working on it. Um, and then you're going to need a 3 8 ratchet. Um, for this tool. So first thing we're going to do now is we're going to start getting this ready to be installed. Um, this bolt right here which is to the right if you're at 12 o'clock this is right around between 2 and 3. Um, we're not going to remove this bolt all the way so I've marked it with a paint pen so it's marked as yellow so do not remove that all the way. If you do that the inner spring is going to unwind and you're going to have to get a new phaser. 12 o'clock position is going to be holding the outside of the spring. You cannot remove this bolt all the way until you put this um, tool in to hold it in place. So what we're going to do now is we're going to loosen the top bolt that's at 12 o'clock. Um, not all the way, but we're going to back it out about halfway, keep an eye on the back side of it. Um, so what we're doing is we're making some room for the tool that we're going to use um, that holds the spring. So right now we're about halfway and I'll zoom in so you guys can see this. All right, so we're going to take this and we're going to sit it on here as such. We're going to grab our little tool here and we're going to take our 3 ace ratchet. And what we're going to do is we're going to relieve some tension so we can slide our retainer lock in place. So just like that. So there's only one direction that this will go in. Um, so as you can see, I got some play on it. Make sure that the uh, little latches fit in place. So once you have that lock in, the longer side goes towards the bottom. Um, now we're going to go ahead and take out the rest of the bolts, except for the one in the, fit in the front. So I'm going to start off with just these on the outside here. I've already loosened them so they won't be this easy to come out. It'll be a little harder for you. Now this one here, we're not gonna take out. We're gonna loose, take this one out now. And we're gonna make sure that everything stays in place. So it's gonna make a click noise when the spring comes loose. Do not stand next to it in case that uh, little gear happens to fail. So now that that one's out, all the pressure is now on our tool. This bolt right here is literally just kind of helping us keep everything in place. It is not required. Um, so now I'm going to loosen this bolt. All right, so we're going to loosen this bolt here just enough that this gear will move. So about a half or a quarter to a half of a turn. 
now I'm gonna take this bolt that I have sitting here out. Only reason I put that bolt in is for the initial um, grab. There's three little pins holding this. We wanna make sure that the back portion, which controls our timing, doesn't come off or get damaged. All right, so let's see here. I have a pretty long bolt. So now we're going to spin this up and as you can see oil comes out if this is a new one you won't have that it's an old one you're going to have oil come out um, best practices for this is to go ahead and clean that oil out with some parts cleaner that way if there's anything contamination metal anything like that you get it all out all right all that cleaned out so now, where do we put our limiter? Um, if you're having the lockout installed, the zero to, what's considered the zero degree limiter, it's only gonna go in one slot, which is right here. It fits in just right. I'll zoom in and get a little closer so you guys can see. It is right to the right, or right below this bolt. If you have the line up at 12, it's below this bolt, it goes right in. All the rest of them, it will not fit, as you see. So if you have a, the four degree limiter, it will slide in the rest of these. The lockout will only go in one spot. This is where we're putting our lockout. So it slides in there nice and easy like that. Then we're gonna close this back up. And then we're gonna start putting our bolts back in and we're gonna put a little Loctite on them. Um, I always put a little Loctite on the bolts um, just to kind of make sure that we uh, have this phaser retained. Remember the longer bolt that has the little tip on the end of it, that's going to go in your 12 o'clock position. That is the one that is used to hold the spring. And again, you're going to have to get some tension off of this in order to put this bolt back in along with the rest of the bolts until you get them started. Um, so there we go. I got that bolt back started. And start all of them by hand. I'm going to put a little Loctite on all of them. I'm not putting a whole lot, just a little bit to retain them. And this is blue Loctite that I'm using. So I'm gonna get them where they need to go and then I'm gonna have to take tension off again to make sure that we can get all of our bolts in. Like I said, I'm only putting a little bit of Loctite on them, not anything crazy. Take some tension off of that. And that's what you need what's needed to get these back started. You have to take a little bit of tension off. Alright. I'm gonna continue to take a little tension off while I tighten all these. Remember, before you remove this tool, make sure that that screw is through holding that spring on the right side. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad day. And now that we have these bolts snugged up, we got everything back how it's supposed to be. Our lockout is installed. We're going to torque these now. Please refer to your current manufacturer recommendations. All parts change all the time. Um, so make sure you know whatever the current vehicle you're working on and make sure you know the specific torque specs for that vehicle. Um, right now, I'm gonna torque these right here to seven pound feet. Um, it could be different. So make sure that everything is done correctly. Then we're gonna go ahead and get this put back on the car. Thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for the rest of the videos. 
like and subscribe below if you haven't already if you're returning to the channel welcome back if you're new to the channel thanks for watching till next time it's matt from night day performance out